Uplink successful. Target system detected. Take it. All right, after far too long, finally time for the third part in the Take and Hold Tips and Tricks series. Um, this one's going to be a little bit more of a, like an FAQ to answer a bunch of stuff as far as my personal gameplay style and questions that I see quite a lot from uh, a lot of people, especially in the YouTube comment section here about things that I do that I haven't explained either in previous uh, Take and Hold Tips and Tricks or just in my general gameplay uploads. So. I'm going to try to answer as much as I can here. The first thing is, what movement mode do I use? So, I believe in the first tips and tricks, I went over the fact that I use Arm Swinger. But uh, I have a couple options set that it seems like not everybody knows about. So, if you flip your wrist over and go to the options panel, and you come to the movement mode options, right next to Arm Swinger, there is another sub options menu, and uh, the Arm Swinger base speed is the big thing that people seem to be missing or I uh, don't know really exists at all. So what this allows me or you to do is to move without actually swinging your hands. So if you're not familiar, arm swinger is triggered by pressing on the B button, the top button on the indexes. Um, the mo locomotion button differs between platforms obviously, but um, usually you have to hold that down and swing your arm. So if I turn off this, we're pressing the buttons and nothing's happening. As I move my arms, quicker and quicker you see that I start to move. So that is the basis of arm swinger. If we move to blazing on left and then I've started to go with slow on my right, if I press that locomotion button to turn on arm swinger but I don't swing my arms, we get that base movement speed. If we do both, they're added together. So I like to have a slower one on my right just if I'm creeping around. I haven't really found one that I'm super happy with here, but blazing on the left really helps you uh, Take corners and I'll reload on the move. So it's really nice for peaking, being accurate, and then being able to load your weapon while you're still mobile. So super important, especially for that specific um, locomotion because it's the only one that it's in. Uh, but if you mess around with arm swinger, really recommend that for sure. Another common question is about palming. So how do we hold multiple rounds at one time so that we can load things like shotguns and revolvers effectively? So this is accomplished with the touchpad, or uh, would be the joystick in on your Rift platform. So you pick up an individual round and then down and in on the touchpad while hovering over additional rounds. And you'll get the ability to palm between 6 and 11 for most rounds. Some of the larger ones like 40 millimeter, you can only hold like 3. Uh, so yeah, that's how we hold multiple and you can spawn lock those drop them in a belt put the touchpad Pick out as many as you want if you want to drop them. It's up on the touchpad So you can mix and match with this too And even if you want to drop a couple into a quick belt you can use this technique to uh, Spawn a lot of rounds out of only one if I can manage to fit it all in the pocket. So super useful It's asked a lot too. very old feature that has uh been much welcomed. So one of the other things I get asked about my playstyle is what is the vest that I use, the quick belt? There's a whole ton. They all have some nice little advantages and disadvantages to them, but I am on the new tactical test. So this gives a really just a nice aesthetic for the magazines. That's the only reason I really like it because it looks good. Um, the centered's cool. I think you get an additional slot somewhere out of the centered. I might be wrong there. Yep, I'm wrong. Oh no, you get an extra... Yeah, you get an extra large weapon slot down here. So you do get an extra large slot, but I like the uh, new tactical test. Um, okay, all the other ones are sphere-based, but they all have some really cool uh, things that they do better than others, like uh, Pack Rat. You have a whole ton of small areas. I even think small pockets is like really limiting. So you don't have a whole bunch you can carry. So if you want to challenge yourself in some different ways, that's a good way to uh, to do so. So the next thing is going to be the gravity gloves. By default, uh, H3 does not have these turned on. So anytime you see me hover over, I get a little sphere on things. 
this basically, just like Half-Life Alex, gives us the ability to um, pull objects to us in a little bit more of a playful way. If you don't have it on, you have to rely on the grab laser, which is the touchpad in on the index and Vive. I'm not super familiar with the Rift platform, so I apologize. Uh, this is just a neat little, I don't really call it any kind of skill-based thing, but it adds a little bit of fun because you're playing with the physics a bit more with them. Uh, they are also found in the options panel. I'm going to make a complete fool of myself and not know where they're at right off the bat. Uh, input and control. Oh, that is the... <laughs> yeah, they are. There they are, from the bottom right. So, yeah, your gravity physics. And then there's also a difference in the flick button. So the way they work, you hold the trigger down if it's on trigger. Whenever you're pointing in the general direction of an item, you'll see it turn orange, pull towards you, and then you have to grab as it lands on you. I've never really used the grab version, but this seems to work with the grab instead of the trigger. So useful and a lot of fun. I think it makes picking things up in the heat of battle a little bit more um, challenging sometimes because you're really trying to reach out and grab them, especially if they're far away and uh, real tiny. You get this nice like stretch to try and figure out where that sweet spot is. And then if you finally find it, which I won't be able to on this thing because it cones out too far, it's super satisfying to pull it towards you. So another technique that I get asked about a lot is uh, the ladder pop. I believe um, Endog coined the term, but basically this is only possible if you're using arm swinger or twin stick. You have to have a physics-based locomotion. You can't be using teleport because it doesn't treat your player in the same way. But if you've seen me do this before, basically we are pulling ourselves up and kind of floating so that we can either um, get to the top or shoot at what's on the top without having to physically climb up. So again, this is really just a nice flick of the wrist. It takes a little bit to get used to, uh, to send you in the right direction so you're not flying out in a different area. But really, I'm just grabbing, pulling and letting go. And if I need to bring myself up, I grab again and bring my neck. Like if your chin is on the next level, it will pop you over to where you have to go. I'm completely messing it up now. So if you ever seen me just jump up ladders, that's the ladder pop, that's the technique. And you can use it to throw yourself around a good bit if you want to stay mobile. But a really, really fun way to uh, move around. And just to show off what it acts like if you are on teleport, which is not a uh, physics-based movement, you'll just kind of sit in the air so you don't carry that momentum with you. You just stop. So you have to be on either like two axis, arm swing, or twin stick, I believe, are the three that will do it. Oh, back to arm swinger we go. Another common question comes with the bolt actions and how do I operate them so quickly? So if you're not aware, there are a few different ways to actually operate bolt handles on bolt actions. The first way is obviously to remove your hand and adjust your grip position to the bolt handle itself to cycle the weapon. Kind of cumbersome, especially in VR, especially if you're trying to make some quick follow-up shots can be tough to grab that bolt all the time. Luckily, Anton has given us plenty of other options. So the second way that is on by default, I believe, is the quick bolting. So I'm gonna use the right side of, I think I'm on the left side with my camera here, right side of my touchpad for the rear of the gun while I'm holding. And when I press that in, it's gonna automatically switch my grip to the bolt until it closes again. So that way we can fire, touch down on the touchpad, right side, make the bolt action, and then as soon as we return to the home, we're back in the gun, ready to fire again. I have to touch that again. We can get some nice quick follow-up shots with that. The third way, and I will have to explore to make sure I actually know where this is at, I'm going to stay, is... Oh, is this a firearm? There we go. Slide bolt. So slide bolt's rather new. Um, and it's a little bit different, I think, between the Vive and the Index. And I'm not really familiar with the Rift again. I apologize. But on the Index, it is a motion for you dragging your thumb from the top down to the bottom and then back to the top. 
So a little bit less of uh, the satisfying motion of a bolt action. We still have to manually cycle it, so it's nice and works really well with the bipod system because you can't quite use that quick bolt with the way that the bipods are set up. And I think that you can't actually make this work unless your bolt or your uh, firing pin is forward. So you actually have to be ready to cycle around before you can use the slide bolt feature. Uh, I believe on the Rift, or um, excuse me, on the Vive wands, it's circling around the top. So you would do a counterclockwise motion from 3 o'clock up to 12 over to 9 and then back around. But that was the original. I've not touched it since then. I don't know what the proper behavior is at the moment. I recommend checking out Anton's devlog for that. I'll have to link that below here. So that really is all I have for this one. I still working on what to make the next episode of this actually about as there's quite a bit left to cover, but I'm not sure how to arrange it all properly. But if you guys still have things that you want to know, or I've missed something or did not explain something properly, please do not hesitate to ask. Stop by the stream. I will gladly answer in real time, too. It's much easier to uh, try and help during those. So until then, I will catch you guys later, I suppose.